What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dabrinsky here. In today's build video, I'm going to be breaking down what I think is one of the strongest and at the same time weakest melee characters in Diablo 2. So you're probably like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, hear me out. I will explain myself in a little bit, but I'm going to be covering the Fire Claw Druid. Now, like all of my previous build videos, timestamps will be in the description below. So if you guys want to bounce back and forth between the attributes, gear, or gameplay, they're there for you guys to use. So please take advantage of them. And a quick reminder, I will be playing around with this character on stream. I stream twice a week on Twitch. Link is, of course, in the description below. Twitch slash Dabrinsky125. So if you guys could give me a follow there, I'd really appreciate it. As always, guys, I really do hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. So there's two key points that I just want to briefly discuss before we dive into the attributes and the skill tree of this build. And the first is that there is a lot of gear variability when it comes to setting up a Fire Cloud Druid. Whether or not you want to completely maximize your fire damage output or you want to kind of take a middle of the road approach that splits melee damage and fire or mostly focusing on physical and supplementing with fire damage. So it's really going to kind of change the shield, helmet and weapon that you use on your build. You'll see when I cover my gear that I'm using 110% increased attack speed phase blade, which probably makes no sense. But when I cover some of the basic fundamentals, you'll get why I chose to use that particular weapon. And the second point that I want to cover, it's very important for for determining your attack speed frames for the werebear. It is solely determined by the increased attack speed that is on the weapon base only. So particular items like High Lords or Lang of Hands, that increased attack speed source does nothing for the IS breakpoints. You need to solely stack IS on the weapon. So that's kind of leads you to some interesting selection for like the top tier weapons for the Firecloud Druids. So something like I just mentioned 110% increased attack speed phase blade or a shield Grizz Caddy or a Tomb Reaver or a Rib Cracker. They're all really good choices because they have a lot of increased attack speed solely on the weapon itself. So for the stat distribution for this Fire Cloud Druid, I went the route of Max Vita. I don't actually have a single hard point invested into strength. You'll see 163, but between my Torch and Annie and all my plus strength gear, I actually don't need to put anything into strength to wear any of the gear choices. Now for Dexterity, I have 136. That's just enough to equip the Phase Blade and then have nothing in energy and then everything into vitality. I actually have over 5k health with this setup. Now, if you're using a different weapon, it might make more sense to invest a couple extra points into strength to boost your overall melee damage, but a shield phase blade gives you hardly any melee damage. So I went the road of trying to maximize fire damage output. So it just made more sense, in my opinion, to put more points into vitality. For the skill investment for this Fire Cloud Druid, I tried to focus on maximizing fire damage first and then worrying about melee damage and supplemental support after that. So starting off with the summoning skill tree, I have one hard point into all of these skills that you see. So one into Summon Raven, Spirit Wolf, Dire Wolf, and Summon Grizzly, as well as one into Oak Sage and Heart of the Wolverine. The Summon Grizzly is mostly just a shield. He doesn't die too often with the CTA buff, although the odd time you do have to recast him. And the reason why I went with two different spirits is that Oak Sage can be used if we want more overall health pool, or I can use Heart of the Wolverine if we want to buff my mercenaries to help take out fire immunities because that is the biggest bane to this character. Anything that is fire immune completely slows down the Fire Cloud Druids, so I more often than not like to go with Heart of the Wolverine just to buff my mercenaries damage, but I do have the option of going Oak Sage for more health pool. For the shape-shifting portion of the skill tree, I have one hard point into Werewolf, one into Lycanthropy, one into Feral Rage, that's just to unlock Fire Claws, and then I have one into Werebear, one into Maul. I completely max Fire Claws to boost my overall fire damage, and then I have one point into Shockwave. It is an amazing one-point wonder that adds a lot of stun and crowd control with this setup. And then finally, for the Elemental Skill Tree, I put all of my remaining points to max Firestorm, Molten Boulder, Fissure, and Volcano, and those are all synergies to boost the overall total fire damage output in shape-shifting form, which I do have a total of almost 14k fire damage per fire claw attack on this setup. Before I jump into a breakdown of the gear for this character, I think it is super important that I demonstrate a couple different weapon choices and how different attack speed bases and the amount of IS on the actual weapon itself is going to dictate your attack speed frames in wearable form. The very first weapon that I want to demonstrate here is Doombringer, so this is a fast attack speed sword class weapon. It has no increased attack speed on the actual weapon itself though. So I just want to demonstrate, you can see, this is just painfully slow. Horrible attack speed. Just a massive hit on your overall damage output. You just, you look like you're attacking underwater. 
and that is a fast attack speed sword class weapon. So I'm going to compare that to Lawbringer and a Phase Blade. So this Rune Word has no additional increased attack speed, but it is a very fast attack speed base. So the Phase Blade to the Champion Sword, it's a little bit quicker. So just to demonstrate this one. So we're getting a little bit more increased attack speed frame rate there. But again, that is pretty slow. Now the next one that we're going to demonstrate here is Ribcracker. This has a shale rune in it, so 70 increase attack speed. A lot of melee damage, so this is a good approach if you want to kind of take a balanced kind of half melee, half fire damage route for your fire class setup. Now 70 increase attack speed, you're going to see a nice big jump and improvement there. This is a solid setup. It does lack some benefits of using say a shield like spirit but you get a good attack speed frame rate and then you also get good melee damage as well and the very final weapon that we're going to demonstrate here is a phase blade like lawbringer but this one has four shale runes and two increased attack speed resistance jewels in it so i have 110 percent total increased attack speed and this is the absolute very fastest breakpoint that you can achieve in wearable form so you can just imagine a fully decked out character around 14k fire claw damage per attack. You're just going to have an insane damage output. Now the downside to using something like this versus Ripcracker is you have very low melee damage output. So you're not going to be able to leech a lot back, which is kind of why I'm using Drax, which we'll dive into that in gear. But uh, you're kind of really focusing on fire damage output and sacrificing melee with a setup like this. But I just really wanted to demonstrate that so you guys have an idea. You don't want to use some slow attacking weapon that has zero IS on it because you will absolutely do no damage in wearable form with your Fire Claw Druid. Now I really want to stress that there is a lot of different alternative options that you can rock for a Fire Claw Druid setup. I'm going to try and cover some of them. If you feel like I missed anything major or if you play this character a lot and you want to tell me about your setup, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. But starting off with the weapon, for this particular setup I went with again the 110% increase attack speed phase blades. So I have four shale runes, two IS jewels, one has 26 cold res, the other one has 26 lightning res. Then I paired that with Enigma. I really like this just for the teleport. When I'm actually running the Firecloud Druid, I will teleport and then shapeshift, attack, and then shapeshift back and teleport. It's just a little bit quicker to get around. And you do get like the two doll skills to boost your Firecloud damage, MF, all the really nice stuff about Enigma. Now I paired that with a faceted Raven Lore to really just boost my overall total damage output. This one was a 320 that I put a minus five plus four facet in it. Now you could definitely rock Jalal's with fire facet. That's a totally viable option. That actually gives you better shape shifting and resistances and FHR, but it's not quite as much fire damage output. Now, since I went with the focus of only maximizing fire damage, I think Raven Lore is a better setup for this particular build, but Raven Lore, or excuse me, Jalal's is definitely a super viable setup. Now for the shield, I went with spirit. I think it's really important to note with a fire cloud druid that you do not want to have a high percent chance of blocking the block rate gets really annoying so spirit's just a really good setup i mean i have fcr for teleporting uh plus skills fhr breakpoints resistances it's just really good overall now as far as a couple different alternative options you can use phoenix but i think it's a horrible decision because of the firestorm proc you're attacking so fast especially with this weapon that while it does boost your fire damage, you're going to be proccing that annoying firestorm and interrupting your attacks. So I just would not recommend it. That's just my personal opinion. Now for the amulet, I'm using a 2 to druid skills, 8 FCR, 20 strength ammy. I've paired this with 20 FCR from Rax. Again, another plus skill to boost my overall damage output. 35 from Spirit. And then I have a 10 FCR dual leech fire res ring. So that's how I get 68 FCR just for a little bit quicker teleporting. Now for different alternative jewelry, you could rock something like High Lords. That's an okay substitute or Mara's. High Lords would be better suited towards a weapon that has a little bit more raw damage. Phase Blade is just really low, like 31 to 35. So I'm really just trying to focus on maximizing my fire damage output with this build. And then the other ring, I have Raven Frost just for Canopy Frozen. That's really important as any melee build. And then these boots are 30 fast run walk, 10 FHR, lightning res, fire res, and MF boots. I kind of have a decent amount of MF with some MF small charms. These boots and Enigma I actually have just over 200, which you'll see when we cover the inventory. 
On the offhand, I just have a 5-6-4 CTA paired with Spirit just to boost the Battle Lords a little bit higher. And then the gloves is really interesting. Because I went the road of using a phase blade, I have again no raw damage. So I can really can't really leech anything back. So the life tap actually provides me with like a consistent and reliable life tap because again, like 31 to 35 damage with something like this, 2% life stone per hit. There's just, I'm not redeeming anything back. So I wouldn't use anything other than Drax, unless you're using, like I said, a rib cracker or a Tomb Reaver or something, then maybe you could get away with Mage Fist for more fire damage or like laying a hands for more actual raw melee damage output. So as far as the inventory goes, I went again, the road of maximize my fire damage output. So I have a Torch and Annie here. So this is a 19, 17, 7 Annie with a 15, 15 Druid Torch. Then I have different assorted shape-shifting skillers. Some of these are really nice, like 20 life, 20 life, 36, extra gold find, a plane, faster run walk, and then I have a 40 MF Geeds Grand Charm. The reason I'm actually carrying a Geeds is just because I have 40 MF there, 18 on the boots, 95 on Enigma, and then I have a full inventory of MF Small Charms. So I actually have just over 200 MF with this setup. So it's kind of cool that I have decent mobility with Enigma, and then I can one tap anything that's not fire immune and still have over 200 MF and farming like ancient tunnels or other areas so just kind of decided to go that kind of way with the build you could rock max damage ar small charms if you used again a weapon that had more raw damage something like rib cracker but again i think for the road of a phase blade and fire damage it just made more sense to kind of stack some additional mf so my mercenary is just the standard fortitude setup which you've probably seen numerous times on this channel infinity is just really makes this build viable without it you're going to run into too many fire moons. You just won't have a good enough damage output. And I'm actually going to farm the ancient tunnels. So I'll show you an area where fire immunities can be broken. And then we're going to run some chaos sanctuary. And you'll see how slow fire moons make this character. So again, relating back to that very point that I said at the start of the video, that this is one of the strongest melee characters and weakest at the same time. Because if you're not running into fire moons, you're going to one tap everything. If you do run into fire moons, you get completely slowed down. So you want to have infinity for this setup so this is just infinity and ethereal thresher with an e-bugged fortitude and then have an f and dario's visage with an is fire res jewel so it gets a little bit higher increased attack speed breakpoint and good overall damage output and this is actually a might aura so nightmare offensive and then i pair that with heart of wolverine so he has a decent damage output to kind of handle those fire immunes or really high fire resistance monsters that infinity does break but still they don't actually take a lot of fire damage because they still naturally have an inherent high fire res. So I'm going to be setting the player's difficulty to 7 for the Ancient Tunnels run and then we're going to tone things down a little bit, go to players 3 for the Chaos Sanctuary because that's an area with a lot of fire immunities and it's just going to make life a little bit easier for us. I mean doing players 3 Chaos Sanctuary versus players 7. So this is why I like doing the 68 FCR breakpoint is because I feel like I have some decent fluidity with my teleports. Because I kind of like to teleport and then shape shift. And we use shockwave for stun. And you can just see anything that's not fire immune is basically getting one tap. You honestly don't even really need to do shockwave other than high fire immunity monsters which we'll run into some invaders here. You'll see, I'm just doing stun to just kind of demonstrate uh, the gameplay, but these guys, you don't need it. Anything other than invaders in the ancient tunnels, it's just absolutely just literally bitch slapping. Think of Rondash, let's check that out. Oh, 15 all res, one open sockets. That's a bit of a rip. kind of demonstrating that shape-shifting and then teleporting kind of playing around there was I believe a champion pack there yeah you can't stun those guys but you can stun anything that's not a champion or not a boss and there's a life tap going off but you can see these guys like this is player seven in terms of like melee damage output there is not a lot of AoE with this setup, but we're just running through stuff. Pick up a couple mana pots. And you can, if you find that it's really annoying, shape-shifting back and forth to teleport, you can absolutely 
just run around. Save yourself a little bit of a headache. But I mean, players difficulty 7 haven't run into any invaders yet, which I was hoping to on this map spot. But we'll run into more fire maidies in the cast sanctuary. You gotta remember, each one of those shockwaves is literally 12 second stun duration with one hard point. Mana burn's a bit of a pain in the butt. Again, you can see that I don't really leech anything back. I kind of have to mana pot. Who is mana burning me? One of you annoying guys. That life tap is the only thing that gives me like you can even see with life tap and having just such low we don't get a lot of leech back, but it's better than nothing, right? Nothing there. Oh, and I realized I don't actually have okay, so we'll have to just recycle the game. Not a big deal. So I'm just going to set the player's difficulty to three for Chaos Sanctuary to make life a little bit easier because you're going to see that I can't really do any damage to anything that's not fire immune, fortunately. So we're just going to get, try and do Infector first because he's going to be by far the worst. Pretty much just going to sit back and offer shockwave support and hopefully I don't have summons die everywhere. The Stormcaster is dead. Instantly. Uh, Doom Knight's dead. And Venom Lords, we can't do anything to. Just basically Shockwave support, and hopefully the Mercenary takes an Infector pretty quickly. And he does. We're just going to get out of here as quickly as we can. Gonna get out of dodge. These guys, you flatline. Just completely flatline. Run through, no fire immunities. Stun to Sace, these demon lords. I'm gonna run around. Because again. Oh, he's not fire immune. Okay. I was gonna say, he's. he's to Sace is often fire immune a lot, but they're flatlined, right? He did lose. Mercenary summons, though. It's kind of annoying every time that you need to kind of recast a summon. You need to go back to Druid form. But the cool thing about Enigma setup is that you can reposition your mercenary. But see these guys, Doom Knights? No fire immunity, no problem. Venom Lords, not so much. We actually lost uh, Heart of the Wolverine again. That's not the the world. Okay, so I'm just gonna teleport, teleport, teleport. Okay. Finish off this last seal boss just to there. Okay, so <laughs> oh man. Got a pretty low uh okay but we'll see how quickly we can kill Diablo here. Watch this. I should have gone up to player 7, but look at this. So like I said, oh, let's check these boots. Ah, uh, garbage boots. So I think that demonstrates how this is one of the strongest melee characters at the same time, one of the weakest. Now, obviously, Gas Sanctuary is not a really good spot to kind of demonstrate what this build is capable of but it did kind of show you contrasting kind of runs there of running through player seven ancient tunnels, no problem. And then kind of really struggling, teleporting around, trying to skip stuff and using shockwave as kind of like a support in Chaos Sanctuary. Now, with that being said, I could absolutely run a different style of weapon that has kind of a more balanced approach of melee versus fire. So it's not really a perfect true test. I think I will, in the future cover this particular build with different weapon setups to kind of 
control the spread of different ways you can tweak the character. It's just too much to cover in one single video, to be honest. Well, guys, there you have it. That wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I really do like playing this character. I don't have tons of experience on it, but I definitely know the basics. So I plan on playing it some more live on stream on Twitch, of course. But guys, as always, if you could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content and stream twice a week on Twitch, so if you could give me a follow on Twitch and a sub on YouTube, I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan-frickin'-tastic day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.